Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to give some examples of chemical equations from all five types of chemical reactions. Um, so you can have some reference for tomorrow's quiz. So we'll start with the first one. Uh, we have rubidium plus phosphorus. Now at this point, we've got to figure out what type of chemical reaction it is. Uh, it's either synthesis, decomp, uh, single replacement, double displacement, or combustion. So we'll go through these. It's not a decomp because there's not one compound that's going to split up into two. It's not single displacement because there's not any type of compound in there. Not double displacement because, remember, double displacement has two elements for every uh, reactant and product, so it can't be double. There's no oxygen in here, so it can't be combustion. So the only thing we're left with is synthesis. And since it is a synthesis equation, the only thing we have to do is put these two together like we always have. So we'll put rubidium, phosphorus, we will find their charges. For rubidium, we've got one plus. And for phosphorus, we're looking on our periodic table, we've got three minus. We cross them, cross them, we end up with rubidium, Phosphorus is phosphide, which is RBP. Sorry about that. That crosses over here. So it's RB3P. RB3P. And from here, we just balance it. There's three rubidiums here. That means there's three over here. So for this instance equation, it ends up being three rubidiums, one phosphorus yields rubidium phosphide. Everything's balanced. We're all set. So let's at example number one. Example number two. Let's go through what type of chemical reactions it could be. We look at it, there's no oxygen. That means no combustion. We look at it, uh, there's no single element, so that can't be it. There's no elements that are doubled more than once. It's not two elements that are going to form into one. So the only thing we're left with is a decomp reaction, which is exact opposite of what we just did. We're going to take sulfur trioxide. This is the gas that when connected with water in the atmosphere is actually going to create sulfuric acid, aka um, acid rain. So this is the gas that when combined with water in the atmosphere makes acid rain. But right now we're just talking about decomposing it. So we just take it and break it up. Sulfur, chilling by itself. Next, we've got oxygen. That's O. We refer back. Are any of these a diatomic that went alone? I have a 2 on it. Sulfur is not a diatomic, but oxygen is. So it becomes O2. So the equation before balancing is sulfur trioxide yields sulfur plus oxygen. For our balancing, we've got three oxygens over here, we've got two on the opposite side, so then common factor between three and two is six, so we multiply the product side by three, the reactant side by two, so now we have six oxygens, six oxygens, but since we manipulated the reactant side, now we also have two sulfurs added two in front of it. So we started with sulfur trioxide. We broke it up into its two components, sulfur and oxygen. Then we balanced it, which came out to being two sulfur trioxides yields two sulfurs plus three oxygens. So there we have decomp. We've got synthesis. Now let's move down to our third reaction. We've got sodium hydroxide plus lithium phosphate. So looking at this right now, let's go through the types of reactions. It's definitely not a decomp because there's more than one uh, element. It's not a synthesis because if we put all these together, it will look super funky. It's not a combustion because it doesn't have O2 on the reactant side. Now we've gone to the different dis displacements. 
single displacement means we have to have one single element. We look up here, we don't see a single element, so we're only left with two decomp, or two elements on each, which means we have a double displacement. Double displacement, yes, it looks very big, but we follow the rules, we should be fine. Any double displacement, the first element, I mean the first compound, we leave OH exactly where it is. So on the other side, come over, OH does not move, and we put our OH with a negative one because that's its charge. Over here, we have a phosphate, PO4. That isn't going to move anywhere, and that's got a one, I mean a three negative charge. So at this point, we haven't done anything other than copy over OH and it's the same spot, copy over PO4 in its same spot. We put their charges, OH having negative one, PO4 having three minus, and we are left with only one thing to do. And that one thing is taking the two elements at the beginning, which are Na and Li, this is lithium and sodium, and we just switch where they go. So sodium no longer goes at OH, it goes in front of Na, and put its charge of one plus. Lithium, it changes spots, instead of PO4, it comes over to being in front of the OH. Remember, when we're doing this, we do not take, we do not take this three over. That three is not taken over. The only thing that's taken over are the Li, PO4, Na, and OH, not this subscript. So we come over here to our product side. We got to put the uh, one plus. So we've got all the elements. We've got all the charges. Now it is rocking out, crossing over. Crosses over, crosses over. This crosses over. The three crosses over. And to rewrite it to make it a little bit uh, neater, this is NaOH. Hasn't changed. Plus lithium phosphate yields lithium oxide. I mean, lithium hydroxide, my apologies, plus sodium phosphate. So at this point, we cross everything over. We have our elements in uh, tat. Only thing we have to do now is balance. So we're going to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Na. We've got one on the reactant side. We go over to the product side, we've got three. Come back over to the reactant side, throw a three in front of the Na. Now, we've got three Na's, three Na's, great. Let's we'll look at the hydroxides. We've got three hydroxides, we've got one on the product side, so that means we've got to put a three in front of the LiOH. So, sodiums are good, hydroxides are good, both sides are great. Now we're looking at lithiums. Reactant side, we've got three. And because we put the three with the OH last time, now we have three LIs. We just got to finish it, we'll look at it once again. Three NAs. Three NAs on the product side. Three OHs on the reactant side. Go to the other side, we've got three OHs. Coming back, we've got three LIs. Go to the other side, we have three LIs. Finally, we've got one phosphate, one phosphate. We are technically done with this reaction and balancing. So coefficients are three, one, three, one. Double displacement. Sorry about that. It's going to be a double. Let's cruise down to the next one. So I've already gone through synthesis. I've already gone through D, D count. I've already gone through uh, uh, double displacement. 
Now we're left with single and combustion. Single and combustion, we've got to know the differences between them. A single reaction or single displacement has one element shown by itself. This one has one, uh, one uh, element shown by itself. That's our oxygen. But then we, we can't assume it's single automatically. We've got to look at it and say, all right, what is it? And it's oxygen. And we know, looking at combustion, combustion always has O2 on the reactant side. When we go through this reaction, we always know in a combustion, we end up with water. Sorry, got to switch my pens here. We always end up with water and CO2. Now with this, we just go and balance it. Start with the C's. C's are great. And we got to go into the hydrogens. Four on one side, we've got to put a two on the other side to balance them out. Now they have four. And we've got carbons are great, hydrogens are great, oxygen, we got two on one side. We have four on the other side. So reacting side, we have O2, throw a two in front of there. So we got CH4 plus two O2 yields two waters plus one carbon dioxide. This is combustion, and this is completed. Last one, process of elimination. This has got to be a single displacement, which means the Li could bump out the calcium. Now, I say could because in the... Um, Activity lab that we just did yesterday and today, we did which chemicals react with which solutions. Now, we have to look on that pink sheet when we figure out, is lithium higher than calcium? So we look on our pink sheet, we realize that lithium is higher than calcium, so this reaction can be possible. So what happens? The lithium bumps out the CA, so now CA leaves the party, chilling by itself. But then we have lithium, and that's coming together with chlorate. Sorry about that. That's LiClO3. Erase that just to make sure everybody sees it clearly. We put the symbols, I mean the charges up top. Now, since CA is chilling by itself, it doesn't have a charge. Lithium is plus one. Chlorate is minus one. So looking at this, Li is one, Li is one. We move on across it, but it's just going to be Li, ClO3. Looking at it, Li is one, Li is one. Calcium is one, calcium is one. Chlorate is one, chlorate is one. So, it is already balanced for the single replacement. So if you want to watch this video again, just reverse it and see which ones you didn't understand. You don't have to go through all of them. If you don't understand the decomp or the combustion, go through it and see which part that you want to review. But these are five examples of the five different types of chemical reactions, starting just with the reactants. We found the products, and then after finding the products, we did balance it. So I hope this helps for your quiz tomorrow or just in general if you want to look at this later on in the year for the midterm or for the final exam coming up. So practice examples for five different types of chemical reactions.